good mom is one who takes that calling seriously and understands the weight and responsibility of being a mom. Sadly, today, I see it a lot. People have kids because they want to be loved on. Not that they want to love on the child. They want to be loved on. They, it's a novelty. It's, it's something to do. And then as it becomes work, it becomes a hassle and a almost resentment. Y'all have seen that. Amen or amen. Uh, there's others that they have a child, whether intentionally or unintentionally, and they just don't want to be slowed up in their life. And so that child's often... I'm talking to the good moms today. And a good mom experiences things that no one else can understand. The concerns, the worries, the fears, the frustration, the hurts, the joy, the laughter, the love, watching their personalities just come out and develop over time. I've been at this church almost 25 years. And some of these babies I have held are getting married. And some of the children have already had children. And it's been a, an honor to be a part of that, to see these people grow up. And so some of these kids, I call my adopted kids because I'm close to them. Randall, you're one of those guys. I'm sorry. But um, what I've noticed talking to the mothers that were here when I first got here is they're looking back over their life and they secretly, they don't share it with a lot of people. They're looking back with regret. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I wish I'd done that. I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd have been a little bit more patient. I wish I hadn't spoiled them so much. I should have been a little bit more lenient. I should have been more strict. And we look back and we're, because the truth is, we don't see the fruit of our labor until they become adults. And then we go, oh my. Uh, moms, I'm not just picking on you. That's true of all of us. I look at my kids and my kids have some of my good qualities. And sadly, they've got some of my bad ones. They picked it up from me. And I go, oh my. I do. If we're honest this morning, can we just confess to ourselves that we have some regrets? Look back and say, Lord, I wish I had known. How many of y'all tried to see the Northern Lights Friday? Chris, did y'all see it? <gasps> did you see it, Amanda? Oh, she nodded. I was like, oh. I was told it was Saturday from 10 to 3 a.m. And I had planned my whole Saturday, and then I realized at 9 o'clock on Friday. It was Friday. I didn't have a plan. It kind of was thrown at me. So I was like, oh my gosh, I've, I've got to get, I gotta get somewhere that's flat and level. So I drove around, found a nice field, and I parked on the side of the road. Everybody thought I was a cop because they kept hitting their brakes <laughs> when they were coming. And I sat there, and I looked, and I watched, and I looked, and I watched, and nothing. Nothing. So I drove to another spot. It's like fishing. Well, not this spot. Maybe try another spot. And I went there and I looked and I watched. I got a glimpse. I got a picture. It's on my bucket list. I can check that thing off. I don't have to travel to Iceland to do it. This is great. This is great. And I come home and I'm just, I'm happy, joyful. And then I look at the pictures online and realize I got robbed. <laughs> Did you see the pictures from Yorktown? Oh, my goodness. So bright it's reflecting off of the water of the river. Beautiful. Goochland. Did you see Goochland? They got the greens. Oh, and as I sat there and looked at all those, this is what I said. I should have drove to Goochland. I could have drove to Yorktown. I could have made that. Oh, just a lot of what? regret. Parenting's kind of like that. We have a child and we really have no idea, no plan. Let's be honest, we, we really don't have a plan. We plan, I'm not busting chops, it's just what I see. 
We plan the nursery and the clothes. Oh my goodness, we love buying some clothes. But did we have a plan on what our objective was in building character? No, and when you have the child, I don't know about you, you had all these good intentions, but most of the time, if we're honest, we're just trying to survive. Trying not to kill them. <laughs> trying, trying to do what is right in the moment, and we just kind of react, just kind of like that. And then what happens is we will compare our kids to those kids. Listen, we do it. Unless we do it two ways, and it's sad, but we do. One way is we'll go and we'll compare them and go, man, my kid is nowhere as good as their kid. There's a worse one than that, though. You know what the worst one is? Oh, my kid is far better than that one. That's pride. But we have some regret. Might even feel a little cheated. I want to just address some things because I know there's a lot of moms with a heavy heart watching their adult children, feeling that in some way you fell short. I should have worked harder. I should have made this more important. I wish I could have taught them how to think of others more than themselves and things like that. I want to share three things with every mom in this room. If you're a new mom, this is true. If you're a mom of a 30-year-old, this is true. It's three things in my short lifetime on this earth that I have seen never fail in parenting. Never, ever, ever fail. Ever. And it's never too late to start. I went out Saturday night. I heard they were going to do the northern, I mean, the, the lights again. And I got all my information everything. It was supposed to be low. There's supposed to be another possibility of a big hit tonight, but I'll know that around 10 o'clock. And church, as tired as I am, I'm going to go out and see it again. I'm going to have my plan. No regrets. Huh? I thought about the Blue Ridge is what I was thinking about. <laughs> so, uh, but we've got to see what the plan is. I don't know. So, uh, whether you're a new mom or an old mom, I want you all to think about these three things. Um, number one. It's just a tough one. It sounds easy, but it's tough. Sometimes the simple things are hard. Number one, place your children in the Lord's hands and pray for them every day. Let me say that again. Place your children in the Lord's hands and pray for them every day. We see this throughout the Bible where they're dedicating their children. As a matter of fact, one of my heroes in the Old Testament, Samuel, he was dedicated to the Lord. The firstborn was supposed to be dedicated to the Lord. Uh, Jesus was dedicated to the Lord. That was something that parents did. And it was a recognition that this child is not mine. I've been given them as a gift and as a heritage, and I'm a steward over their life and leading them into coming to know God and believing in God and worshiping God. But you can't do that unless you really kind of place them in the Lord's hands. We all do this. I've done this. We've all done this. They're my child. You don't think so? You poke a little child and see what Mama Bear will do to you. They will come out, claws raised. But really, they're the Lord's. We had Nikki and Michelle kind of thrusted upon us, and we had no clue what we were doing. I was kind of glad it happened that way for two reasons. One, I didn't have to change diapers. But two, I could come into it knowing with some wisdom, I have no clue what I'm doing. And so we gave them to the Lord. And let me uh, show you something to help me. John, if you can show them picture number one, let's hope it. Somebody told me about this book right here. And uh, I went ahead and got that book. There's another one. Hit the next one. And uh, Beth had that one. And so we, we kind of read that a little bit. And then I got something that changed my life. There it is, right there. That one. And it, go to that next one. That's the first one I got. That is just a book that you can pray a prayer daily for your kids. A little devotional, just a page with a prayer. And we began praying for those two girls. Turn it back to the next one. 
when they went off to college, I got that one. And I realized something. I hadn't prayed them up for college yet. Man, I should have prayed harder for them on college and uh, started praying. And I had five things that Liberty uh, University had sent their parents to pray for their kids. And I had that on my office, on my desk. And every morning when I was at my desk, I'd pray that for Michelle and for Nikki. And you know something amazing? When they graduated, God does this sometimes. I call them God winks. After they graduated, when Nikki graduated, Michelle almost just had one class to go. But everything I'd prayed on that list happened. I think sometimes what we do as parents is we have our plan. I'm going to go out and look at the northern lights. And we don't have a clue what we're doing. We think we do, but we don't. And we're looking around at other people and trying to imitate and reading books and things like that. There's nothing wrong with those things. But I think the best thing anybody can do is to pray every day for your kids. Let me read you a verse. Unless the Lord builds the house, the builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the guards stand and watch in vain. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, and he grants sleep to those he loves. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. And some of y'all have been blessed with kids. I know sometimes you don't feel blessed. But down the road, you're going to see the blessing, especially when they give you those grandkids. And moms, no matter how old your children are, if I had to do my life over again, the number one thing I'd have done more is I'd have prayed more. I would have studied less and prayed more. Because when you do that, your dependence is built on the Lord and what the Lord's going to do. I have never seen a praying parent, a genuinely praying parent, never in my life have I seen a genuinely praying parent have kids that never came back to church, that never turned their life around, that didn't stabilize. And I've seen some really bad kids. I had one that came to my house. They were alcoholic. They were in their 20s. They were alcoholic. They were into drugs. They were in everything else. I didn't know what to do. And you know what I did? I gave them some crazy advice. Here it is. Let's start praying for them. And they're, like, they're a trophy of grace now. And you know who gets the credit for that? God does. God and God alone. And the parents will tell you that. We have a parent. They're watching at home right now because they can't come to church. They'll know I'm talking about them. They had a son that was just going through so much. And they began praying and praying and praying. And God not only turned that situation around, it took a while. But God showed that parent some promises, some things that she could hold on to. God really showed it to her. And you know what? It came what? True. If she was here today, I'd get her to stand up and just share a testimony of all that God has done in answering her prayers. The second thing, this one's tricky. Put those toes on the floor. We all need to have them stepped on a little bit. Live rightly before them. Live rightly before them. Let me share some verses with you. I've been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous, those in right standing with God, abandoned or his descendants pleading for bread. All day long he is gracious and lends, and his descendants are a blessing. That's Psalm 37, 25, and 26. Let me give you Proverbs 27, 20, verse 7. A righteous man who walks in integrity and lives life in accord with his godly beliefs, how blessed, happy, and spiritually secure are his children after him, who have his example to follow. Now let me explain that a little bit. When we got Michelle and Nikki, we were court ordered to get counseling and we were it was really strange because the dynamic in our home was weird. Michelle was struggling and Nikki was just praising God that her prayers had been answered. Nikki had been praying from a very long time when she was a little kid, God, I'm with the wrong family, please put me in the right family home. So when they were placed with us, Nikki did this. Praise God from whom all and, and Nikki likes stuff. And y'all know my wife, she likes to buy stuff. And so they just clicked. And me and Michelle not only clicked, but we butted heads because me and Michelle are just alike. 
And we just couldn't get Michelle to do some simple things, like tell the truth. Or to do this or to do that, we couldn't figure it out. And the counselor said something I never forgot, and I realized it was like a lightning strike hit me. This is what he said. He said, Michelle loves the stability, the financial security, the safeness of your home, but she admires her mom. And you become what you admire. And when he said that, it just hit me like a ton of bricks. Because that's true across the board. We become what we admire. And let me tell you something, parents, whether you're a good parent or not, your kids admire you. They look up to you. Now that changes a little bit when they become teenagers and the hormones kick in. But listen, there's nobody stronger than daddy. There's no one sweeter than mama. And you're their whole world for a long season. And they will become what they admire. If you look up the word admire in your Bible, you'll get all kinds of verses. Like this one from Deuteronomy 18, verse 9. God's warning the Israelites, when you come into the land your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations here. 1 Corinthians, Paul tells the Corinthians, I urge you to imitate me. 2 Thessalonians, we did this not because we do not have the right as such to help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you to imitate. And it goes on and on and on. We imitate what we see. We, we say this, don't we? Do not do what I do. Do what I Listen, have you wondered why your kids don't listen to what you say and do what you do? It's true, isn't it? Somebody, um, well, let me share this before I share that. When I was at Black Creek, I noticed something, and I'm a, I'm in, I'm a learning disability type person, I guess. It just takes me a long time to learn some stuff. When I was at Black Creek, I was 19 and 20, and I was working with the youth, and, and I noticed, and this is true across every church, no matter where you go, this is true in every church. There was two types of parents. The parents that dropped the kids off and the parents that were there. The ones that dropped their, their kids off around the age of 13 to 15 would come to the youth workers and do this. Hey, I got a problem with my kid. They're being disrespectful and rude. They're not listening to me. And you think you can fix them? And at 19 and 20, I was like, yes, I can. <laughs> but you know what I learned over time? They were doing what the parents were doing. They were disrespectful to the spouse. They were rude to the spouse. They controlled the spouse. They disrespected authority. They didn't like... And then when their kids started doing it, they were scratching their head going, why are they acting like this? There's a great, great proverb that we all know. You ready? Monkey see. <laughs> Monkey do. <laughs> And listen, when I say live rightly before them, it's really, really, really important. I had somebody share a song with me this week. Don't know why it grabbed me, but it did. It was called By and By. And they said, have you heard the song By and By? And I'm thinking in my head, yeah, I've heard that. It's a hymn. We all know By and By. Sweet By and By. That's not what they were talking about. It's a country song. B-U-Y, By and By. And I listened to that song. The first time I heard it, I was like, That's, that guy's put something together pretty deep. Listened to it on the way home. Listened to it the next morning. Listened to it that afternoon. Went home and looked at the official video. And in the official video, it was something very interesting. The, the writer of that song, when he was growing up, his house caught fire. And burned to the ground. And that, the video starts with a picture of that fire. And in the front yard was a guitar. And the guy that wrote that song said, my dad didn't save the pictures, my dad didn't save his guns, he had a lot of guns. The only thing he saved was my guitar. He has a picture of it. And as I listen to that song, with the great computer age we live in now, and it's amazing, technology amazes me. I'm not scared of it, I love it. It's just the evil people behind it that scare me. I said, 
let me get some other songs that are kind of like that. Like Mike and the Mechanics, The Living Years. I listened to that all week. That was one of my dad's favorite songs, and I understand now why that was one of dad's favorite songs. We all know this one, The Cat's in the Cradle. You know how that song ends? It says, I've long since retired. My son moved away. I called him up just the other day. I said, I'd like to see you if you don't mind. And he said, I'd love to, Dad, if I can find the time. You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids have the flu, but it was sure nice talking to you, Dad. It was sure nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me, he'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me. Monkey see, monkey do. Be very careful, Mom. They will be like you. Live rightly. If you pray for them every day, you live rightly. Listen, if you want to correct your kid's behavior, you know the best place to start? There it is. Somebody said it. Your own. You work on you. If you're rude, guess what your kids will probably be? If you throw cups and dishes, guess what your kids are going to do? You're preparing them for their future spouse. And they may be just like you. All right, y'all can pick your feet up now. <laughs> Here's the last point, moms. And this is probably the most important thing that I'll share today. Live out your relationship with Jesus Christ before them. Let me say that again. This is true of every Christian in this room, by the way. Live out your relationship with Jesus Christ before them. I grew up surrounded by preachers. Did y'all know that? I did. I grew up surrounded by preachers. I had an aunt preach to me why TV was evil, why radio was evil, why the world was evil, and why makeup was evil. She preached it to me. I had another aunt preach to me if I liked to drink, sip on white vinegar, I was probably going to turn into an alcoholic, and she <coughs> preached to me. I had adults and co-workers preach to me about the kind of music I listened to, how fast I drove, and I shouldn't be smoking. They preached at me. I had a lot of people preaching at me. But I had probably a handful, I'm serious, I probably could count on one hand, Christians that lived out their relationship in front of me. And when those people came across my path, something weird always happened. I can see every face of every young man and every young lady. I can see their face. The first one I can remember was a young lady by the name of Virginia. She had been transferred from Liberty Christian School to King William High School. And she was cute. And when there's a new girl that's cute, there's a buzz in the school. And there was a buzz and she was in our PE class and I was hyped. Not only was I going to see this new girl, she was going to be in those 80s shorts that used to be so popular. <laughs> and we got out there, and I thought she was going to be like every other girl, and she won't. She wasn't afraid of her faith. She wasn't abrasive and rude with it. She wasn't preachy either. She simply lived it, what? Out. And then she became an enigma. This girl's strange, but intriguing. And then over time, what would happen is, because she was the way she was, I would get convicted about how I was. See, when people were preaching at me, that just made me bristle up and go, yeah, I'll pump, turn the music up louder. But when somebody was living it out in front of me, it would bring conviction and intrigue all at the same time. Because they had something I didn't have. I wanted to know more, but I really didn't want anybody knowing that. You know, and I feel bad because I don't think that little girl even knows the impact she had on a lot of us. Virginia. She married Timmy Schools. I had very few that generally prayed during situations that really knew God. You knew they knew God. And every one of those were humble. They were humble people. They were humble learners. They weren't uh, 
judgmental and abrasive and rude and angry. They were living their Christian life out, and they were different. One of the things that, that just killed me, and I've shared this with the church before, but y'all may have forgotten there's some new people here. When our kids were older and the, the, they were legal, they were no longer technically ours by law, but they, they still are our daughters. We're, we're having Mother's Day over at Nikki's house today with all the moms. We're in the car one day, and, and I asked them this question. What was the worst thing about growing up in our home? They're in their 20s. I figure I can handle it, Sam. What was the worst thing? And they sat and thought, you know, I'm thinking it's going to be, we were preacher's kids. When you got those daddy eyes and got down on it, dropped the hammer on it, I was thinking all those things. This is what they said. We hated riding in the car with y'all. What? We hated it. You were always on the phone. Oh. And listen, I knew I couldn't say, yeah, but. Because that's what they truly hated. They hated it. You were always on the phone. You'd get in the car and you'd be on the phone the whole time. I said, what's the best thing about living with us? Now, I knew what that was. We had taken them to Walt Disney for Christmas. We'd taken them to Myrtle Beach. We'd been to Hershey Park Amusement Park. We'd been to Sight and Sam. We'd done all these things, Sam. We used to travel like you did, Sam. Take our kids everywhere. I know it's one of those. And this is what they said, and I'll never forget this. They both sat there and thought about it for a second. We liked it when you would have the prayer times with us. Now listen, I didn't do that a whole lot. I look back, that's one of the things I should have done more. This is what we did. On Sunday night, we'd have them come in and say, hey, what can we be praying for y'all for this week? And we would sit on the bed and talk, and they would share, and then I'd pray for it, and they'd go to bed. That impacted them more than anything else. Y'all impacted them, both good and bad. You know, Nikki's looking at getting back to church. She really wrestled with some things for a while. And, you know, she was wrestling. I didn't share this with y'all because it's private, but she was wrestling with, with some things that had happened. She was angry. And I Facebook stalk her and Instagram stalk. I do all kinds of stalking. And on her post the other day, she said, I recommend God. I recommend you try God. I was living out my relationship with Christ when I was doing those prayer times. Nikki tells me, and I'm not bragging, because I am a hot mess, and y'all know that. I'm just glad y'all keep me around. She says things every now and then that, that, that just makes me want to cry but I can't because I'm a man. She said this the other day. You know, Dad, you're such a giving guy. And she just said off the cuff. And she said, I don't think people realize that. But I, you know what I was doing? I was living out my what? My faith. She'll call me and say, hey, haven't told anybody this yet. Can you be praying for this, this, this? I can. Can you keep it a secret? I will. And she does that because she knows I will pray for her. If you will live out your relationship with Jesus before them, and this is what I mean by that. When you're struggling with God, let them know you're struggling. I'm kind of I'm kind of angry with him right now. I don't know why this is happening. He's not, he's been real quiet. He hadn't talked to me. I don't know what's going on. That's living it out. I'm going to share this last illustration and then I'll leave you alone. We taught our kids that prayer was important, and no matter what it was, you could pray for it. If you lost a toy, you could pray to God for that, that God is big enough to hear even those things. And we drove that home to them, and we would do it at our house. I'd be looking for my wallet. I can't find my wallet. I said, let's pray real quick. And I would just say it out loud. I wouldn't bow my head. I wouldn't close my eyes. I was like, Lord, where's my wallet? I've been looking for 15 minutes. Do you, can you just show me and lead me where it is? Can you just, and I'd sit there quiet. You need to be quiet for a little bit after you pray. Listen, 
And then I'd go over and I'd find it. And Nick goes, oh my gosh. I was living my faith out. Is this making sense? They, they've seen me witness to people. They've seen me share stuff. They've seen me do things against my will. Because it's not my will be done. It's God's will be done. And Michelle and Nikki both have seen that. We were here one night and we were meeting. And she had, I'd given her my church keys. And some of y'all see me around my kids and my grandkids. I'm a little stern. So I gave her the keys. I said, listen, this, this is all I got. Don't lose this. Okay? I give it to her. So go ahead and take it. I give it to her. I said, now what are you going to do with that? I'm not going to lose it. She lost them. <laughs> she lost them. She was with Lauren Webb. She had them in her pocket. She was running around. She comes, goes, comes back in because we were in a meeting. And she goes, oh, my gosh, we've lost the keys. And they looked and they looked and they looked to the point of tears. She was scared she was going to get them daddy eyes. She busted, and some of y'all were in that meeting. She busted into the meeting, pumped. Dad, it worked! It worked! What, what worked? Dad, you won't believe it. I'm thinking, Nikki, I am in a meeting. I lost your keys. I went, what? But I prayed, and God showed me where they were. And I couldn't be mad at her for that. I was like, that's awesome. She was so excited. It was the first time she saw God show up in a big way. But that's because she saw me and my wife praying for things like wallets and glasses. If you will dedicate your children to the Lord and pray for them every day, live rightly before them, and be real about your relationship with Christ and live that out for them, Moms, no matter how old they are or how small they are, you're going to be blessed. Your children will be blessed. And I have never seen those things fail, ever. And so this is a challenge message. So if you're a new, you got a newborn, or you know somebody's got a newborn, get them one of those books. Say, hey, here's a prayer book. You ought to pray this for your child every day. If your kids are, kept, mom about tried to kill me, threw a Bible at me one night. I was such a bad kid. <laughs> the only thing she didn't say is, get behind me, Satan. You know, that's. <laughs> but she was praying, but she lived rightly. She lived her faith out. I saw her lose her temper. I saw her say sorry. I saw it with my dad, too. If you will do those three things, I promise you, I don't care how old they are, you'll start to see a turn. You'll see it. And you'll be blessed. Amen? Amen? All right, let me go, Lord, in prayer. Lord, I just want to thank you for the moms. Father, I'm thanking just personally, just in this room alone. There's people that have changed my life, have impacted my life. Kids who've done that. I can name them all but they were because of moms who helped raise those kids and shape them and form them the way they are. They didn't do it alone. They did it with their spouse. But Father, sadly, some of them did do it alone. And Lord, if they have regrets and they're looking back, Father, I pray that you would just give them your peace. We only know what we know in the moment. Hindsight, we already have wisdom and experience to see back on what we should have done. But Lord, I pray that you would help them all to just entrust them to you. Pray for them. Pray for their protection, their purpose, their guidance. I pray that we would live rightly before them as examples that they could imitate us. And Father, that we would have a relationship with you that they could see. That they could be called blessed. Father, we thank you for the moms. I thank you for the children they bear and the adults they've grown into. And I thank you for many of them, for they're the church of tomorrow. And we just thank you for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.